Let's talk about the subject of posture and back pain. Now, if you go on the internet, if you look on YouTube, you will find that posture is one of the most talked about subjects in relation to pain in general, not just back pain, so thoracic pain, neck pain, back pain, everywhere in the body, we're talking about posture, even foot posture. Have you got a flat foot? Have you got an eye high arch? So let's talk about some of the evidence and the data that we have around this subject. And of course, I am Ben Cormack. So let's talk about this in relation to low back pain. And we often talk about having, you know, specific curves in our spine that need to be, you know, a certain shape or a certain degree of angle, etc. First thing to mention is the idea of posture is very, very subjective. We do not have a gold standard measurement of what is good posture. So no one has been able to say, this is good posture. Um, these are the measurements. This goes across a whole bunch of people. And if you have this posture, you don't have any problems. We do not have that data. So if we don't know what is good, and I'm sure there's lots of people out there going, oh my God, but we do know what is good. We've got pictures of people standing up straight. We've got pictures of people with crosses through them, or we've got pictures you know, of people slouching and doing this and doing this. And that must be bad posture. Well, that's great. But it's very, very subjective to be making some pretty bold claims from. So if we rewind back, I'm going to say it again. We have currently no gold standard of what is good posture. And actually, what may be normal posture probably has quite a broad you know, parameter of what that is. Um, likely the tolerances are not quite as fine as we, you know, or, or as some people suspect they are. So um, what does the data say? Well, there was a systematic review that looked at spinal curves and health, actually. Um, and I suspect, you know, they were trying to um, think about some of the claims that we make around the spine and not just pain, but health in general. And we have certain groups that kind of do that. Um, but they determined that there wasn't really much association between spinal curvatures. And they looked at the thoracic and they looked at the lumbar and actually many problems in the body, including pain. And they had quite a big sample for that. They looked at quite a few papers and that was the Christiansen paper. Um, we have some other research that kind of looks at things like our pelvic tilt. So the theory goes that our pelvis can posteriorly tilt and that creates that kind of flat back posture or it can anteriorly tilt and it creates that excessive lordotic or curvature of the spine. And that often gets blamed for back pain. So um, Lee Harrington looked at that. He looked at asymptomatic people, and that's really important. So um, if spinal curvatures relate well to pain, then surely if we are asymptomatic, we shouldn't see any of these kind of anterior pelvic tilts or these lordotic spinal postures. And that's the theory, right, is that we get this pelvic tilt, our hip flexors shorten, um, other stuff lengthens, and then suddenly we get this anterior pelvic tilt and this uh, quite excessive lordosis. But he actually found that lots and lots of asymptomatic people actually had this anterior pelvic tilt. Um, so I think that it was about 80% of men had an anterior pelvic tilt and no pain, they were asymptomatic. And actually very, very few, around 10% of men or women that they looked at had this mythical neutral posture that meant that um, you're going to have no problems. Now, posture, it might be that getting stuck in any posture could turn out to be painful. So if we stood all day in really, really good posture, would our neck likely get stiff and ache? Absolutely. If we were all day hunched over the computer, then we might also get pain 
as well. Being in that position, not moving, not creating the physiology that happens when we move and we change the acid profile of the tissue and we bring oxygen in and we take bad metabolites out and these type of things. So could any posture be painful? And I think the answer to that is yes, and it's whether we stay in it for too long. Another way of redefining posture might be that if we are static and still, we are not moving. So can our postures move? Do we move? And I think that's important as well. So can any <coughs> posture or position potentially be painful? Yes. Um, could really the key to the postural discussion be moving more? Potentially, yes. Um, so I think sometimes we've ill-defined that, especially as we don't have that gold standard and we have other research that kind of points towards the fact that you know, some of these postures that we talk about um, are, you know, normal and they exist also in asymptomatic people as well. Now, Priest did another study and what they found was actually it's really, really difficult to determine what kind of posture someone has. And I, again, you just need to look at them, I can imagine is the cry. But they actually found that some of the tests that get used, and there's the classic one where you determine the ASIS versus the PSIS, so the anterior superior iliac spine at the front and the posterior superior iliac spine at the back. And that kind of tells us about this pelvic tilt. And I remember doing that way back in the 2000s. And actually what they found in their studies, they looked at skeletons um, and they found that actually these bony landmarks are not the same for everyone. So someone could have a neutrally tilted pelvis but actually the bony landmarks are in some different positions. And that's kind of cool because it tells us that spines are different. So, um, and bones are different as well. So bones, not spines, my apologies. So if you think about the fact that we have these different um, bone kind of positions, we probably have different bone lengths, bone thicknesses, bone sizes. Is that likely to mean our postures might be a little bit different as well? Also, we spend our times in some different functions and doing some different stuff. A boxer, for example, may spend themselves th their time in these kind of hunched over positions. And we may, may say, that's a terrible posture. Does that lead to more back pain, more shoulder pain? Um, and again, w we don't particularly see that. So is it just as simple as bad posture causes pain? not even close. Uh, there was a really interesting study by Haino back in 1990. And what they found was that actually your anterior pelvic position or your pelvic position in general didn't actually have a reliable mechanical effect on the lumbar spine. So the idea is this tilts and it hyper expends, extends the spine. But actually they found it wasn't quite as simple. And that again, you know, makes some sense because human beings aren't that simple. They're biological organisms, lots and lots of moving parts that adapt and change in different ways versus, you know, simple mechanical objects that are very predictable and do similar things. Um, so this whole idea of posture probably makes sense mechanically, intuitively. It's probably something that we can easily identify and blame for back pain. Now, here's another problem. If you start stretching and moving and exercising, can that help your back pain? Yes. If you're exercising and moving and stretching to change posture, can that help your back pain? Absolutely, yes. What we don't often measure post is, has posture changed? And when we actually do the science, when these postural studies, we see that the exercises for posture can help because we're moving and we're doing some good stuff, but actually, whether we it changes pain is not reliant on changing posture, which is really fascinating because I think a lot of the time we turn around and think, you know, oh, that must be, this is the reason that we did it, this change, so therefore it must be for the reason that we did it. And actually, again, the scientific method doesn't always support that. That's why we actually measure stuff pre and post and see if the changes in the two variables correlate with each other. Um, and hopefully if we do that well, we can also determine some causation as well. And again, with this posture thing, we don't simply see that. So can the exercises help? Yes. Is the change in our pain reliant on change in posture? Absolutely not. And again, that brings into question, what is the mechanism that's causing the change? 
Does it validate the intervention? Does it validate the concept? Absolutely not. So look, does posture have a reliable effect on causing pain? Absolutely not. Um, there is no real great data um, to support that. And actually, when you think about the complexity of the body, the differences in bony landmarks, etc., you know, that kind of makes sense versus that more mechanical um, perception. Can asymptomatic people have terrible posture? Yes. There's lots of people walking around now without shoulder pain, without back pain, and other people who look fantastic and look great and have terrible chronic long-term pain. So is it as simple as that? Of course not. Um, is it tough to measure? Well, yes, some of the simple clinical measures we have actually don't allow us to determine that and make those ideas. Let's reframe it as let's get moving. Could any posture be painful the more time we spend in it? Um, let's kind of stop blaming things simply mechanically for pain because sometimes it gives people the idea there's a simple mechanical answer and I think we can do better.